This video will show you how to configure motor outputs in Mach 4. Go ahead and start Mach 4 GUI. I will create a new profile just so you can see how everything gets set up from scratch. And I will choose motor video. The default address of this ESS will be 10.9.9.9. .9 Go ahead and type it in if it does not show up automatically. If you used a different value for the IP of your ESS, in other words, you changed it from the factory default, go ahead and enter that here. We want to use the ESS, so check that box. Hit OK. Enable the ESS. Configure. Change the buffer prefill level to 100. That's how many motion commands will be buffered at once. That will be about a tenth of a second. We will choose an input pin for our e-stop. Use whichever one is actually configured for your system. Since I don't know what you have, I will just choose this one as a random one. I don't actually have an e-stop hooked up on this board since it's a bare board. But I will set it to active low. That way it will be cleared by default. Choose e-stop. And since I set active low here in this screen, when we're configuring the mock part, we will not check active low again, otherwise it will invert it a second time. So just invert in one location, not both. Next we will choose our motor outputs. Let's do port 2, pin 2 and 3, since they'll be outputs, we need to check this. Port 2, pin 2, and port 2, pin 3 are enabled. We'll set them to motor zero step and motor zero direction. I will assume that that's for my x-axis. And this is just a helpful name to remember what it is when we look at it. We will now configure the mock plugin. We're in inches, that's fine. Most of these other things we don't need to worry about at the moment. Axis mapping, master zero will be, or master motor zero will be our X, and we need to remember to check it to enable it. Over in our motor screen, we click on motor zero, and the big X through the middle means we've got problems and it's not going to work. The reason for that is the 6,000 units per minute for velocity is too high. Let's change that to 300. And we now have a trapezoid, which means it will work enough for getting testing up and running. Come over to input signals. Come down to e-stop. It's enabled. Choose the smooth stepper. And e-stop. That's our only input signal we've signed, so that's pretty easy. Hit apply. We don't have any output signals at the moment because the motors are outputs of their own. So we don't need to set them here. That looks good. We hit OK. Looking down here, e-stop is cleared. If we had checked the e-stop inverted a second time or active low in the mock configuration, it would say e-stop is set. So e-stop condition, we cannot do anything with an e-stop condition, so we have to clear it. Again, you do not want to double invert your signals by putting active low in the mock configuration and in the smooth stepper configuration. E-stop is cleared. Now let's click enable, go to MDI, and let's make our x-axis move. So we'll put in a feed rate of 10, so that's frank 10. Put in G1, and we want to move the X to 1 inch, so X1. Hit cycle start. 
and nothing happens. The reason for this is you'll notice that this top green LED is not on solid, and that means that mock is not connected to it. What we need to see is this one on solid and this one blinking very fast. So we can hit disable, exit mock, go back to the mock for GUI, choose motor video again or whatever profile you just made, hit OK, and give it a moment for it to connect. Go to enable, go back to MDI, Frank 10, Greg 1, X1, cycle start. And we see the DRO moving from 0 to 1 inch. We now put in 0, hit cycle start, it moves back to 0. Now I will show you what it looks like on my oscilloscope for the outputs. Here you can see it going in one direction. And now watch when we switch to the other direction. The blue line will go from here to up. Now we went in the other direction. These pulses you see right here, the spikes, are the actual steps coming out of the smooth steppers pin going into your motor driver. Now I change the feed rate and also adjusted the oscilloscope and you can actually see the width of the pulse train coming out of the smooth stepper. If you don't have access to an oscilloscope, you can use a multimeter and hook that up to the step output pin of the smooth stepper and watch what happens. It goes from being at 0 millivolts up to about 165 millivolts and then after it completes it goes back down to 0 millivolts. That value will change depending on your feed rate. To finish setting this up, go back to plug-in, and let's assume that this is motor 1, and this is motor 2. And that's motor 3. Again, make sure your motors actually correspond to the pins going to your breakout board. Now in the motor mapping, We'll enable X, Y, Z, motor 1, motor 2, and we'll assume A is slave to X, so motor 3. We now have motor 0, 1, 2, and 3. These are all with X's instead of trapezoids, so let's just make them all work the same. You will have to tune them for your individual systems, and that will be up for you to tweak. But those are all valid profiles now. Now let's change this from X to Y. Enable. Y just went up. So now when you run X1 or X any value, we can see steps coming out of the X step, which was motor zero step. And now also on the slaved A axis, which is motor three step, we can see concurrent pulses coming out on that slave axis as well. So the smooth stepper is successfully outputting step pulses to all of the motor outputs that we need.